the AU is also looking at Raila Odinga and they are seeing that this guy is a risk. He's going to give us bad press. Why so? Because the African Union is paying him, and this is based on the research I did, roughly $220,000 per year. If you do the math, that's around 1.7 million Kenya shillings every month. And every day they turn on the TV, their esteemed employee is on podiums hosting maandamano, rallies, talking about insurrections, and they're discovering we might just be in trouble here. Raila Odinga woke up to some very disturbing news. His role as the African Union Special Envoy for Infrastructure was officially deemed redundant. And thus his services were terminated. Let me just read you the letter that the African Union sent to Raila Odinga. And I quote, Now this letter is dated 19th February 2023. Take note of that because... It will be important slightly up ahead. Now here's what the letter says. Excellency, it is my distinct honor to write to you with respect to your mandate as AU High Representative for Infrastructure Development in Africa. Your exceptional leadership and unique command of the issues concerned has been crucial to the leveraging of infrastructure as a key priority within the continental agenda. The transformation to the NEPAD Agency to African Union Development Agency, NEPAD, has now been completed with full mandate to implement the continental agenda of in, on infrastructure. Your role in this journey, Excellency, has been invaluable. Allow me to express my profound gratitude for accepting to serve in this role during the transition period, which has now come to a happy conclusion. The African Union hopes to continue counting on your support for other possible assignments, wishing you all the best in your future endeavors. Please accept, Excellency, the expression of my highest consideration and personal esteem. Now this was written by Mr. Musa Faki Mahmat. You can see his name on top of the official AU stamp. Now of course this letter was sent directly to Raila Odinga. It was received in his office yet there is a copy on Twitter. That tells you that there is a mole in Raila Odinga's office but that's another story for another day. Let me just read you Raila Odinga's response because in his response it sounds like he initially did not want to continue with the role and he had requested the AU to relieve him of his duties. But when you look at the dates, they tell a different story. The AU was telling him uh, that his stint with them has come to an end, and that was on 19th. But on the 23rd, Raila Odinga is explaining how they need to relieve him so that he can attend to other matters. How does it usually work? Do you get fired, then you now tell your boss, uh, kindly relieve me because I need to do something else? Or do you first tell your boss, then you get relieved? So the timing, the date there is a bit uh, murky, but nonetheless, here is Raila Odinga's response. Now this is from Raila Odinga's secretariat, dated uh, 23rd February 2023, four days after the one for the AU. Excellency, during our meeting on the sidelines of the second Dakar African Infrastructure Financing Summit in Dakar, Senegal, about three weeks ago, I indicated the challenges to my continued availability for the role of AU High Representative for Infrastructure Development in Africa. In that regard, I welcome your quick action that will free me to pursue other pressing and urgent matters. It has been a great pleasure and honor serving our continent and our people and addressing infrastructure development, which we agree is the greatest contributor to our unending struggle to lift ourselves out of poverty and underdevelopment. I am proud to have made a contribution to the transformation of NEPAD Agency to African Union Development Agency, NEPAD, amongst other contributions during my tenure. Many challenges remain, including the inaction by the continent's leaders and vested interests outside the continent that are only too keen to keep Africa in its present condition. Hopefully, the continent will overcome these. I will be indicating when I might be available for deployment to the continental assignment as circumstances change. Wishing you all the best in the difficult role. Please accept the assurances of my highest consideration and personal esteem. Signed, Raila Odinga, EGH. So Raila Odinga is making it look like he had already communicated that he wants to exit that position. But I don't think that is true. That is a cover-up story just to do some PR control in the public. Because it's never good when you're the opposition leader trying to start a revolution or whatever it is he's up to. And then you're being fired by the AU. That shows that the entire continent has given you a vote of no confidence. But nonetheless, we're going to look into the various reasons as to why Raila Odinga could have been relieved from that position. But before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula. Hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. So first reason as to why his services were terminated, just as the AU had stated, 
Ray Lodinga was there on a transitionary period whereby they were moving from NEPAD to African Union Development Agency, NEPAD. And once the transition was done, Ray Lodinga's services were no longer needed. But the truth of the matter is that if you're part of the transitionary phase, you might as well be part of the next chapter. It is unusual for a leader who's top brass like Ray Lodinga in the African continent to be sidelined like that. There are underlying factors as to why they chose that direction. And one of those reasons is that Ray Lodinga is racking up a very bad reputation in the African continent. Even in the last election, Julius Malima of the Economic Freedom Fighters of South Africa came out and said that Mr. Odinga, and that is the word he used, Mr. Odinga must accept the elections, he must stop always causing chaos in the country and accept the results. Search up the video, what Julius Malema said to Ray Odinga, that is someone who is in the south, he's a South African. But even he picked up on Ray Odinga's usual behavior of causing chaos after elections and he told him off. The AU is also looking at Ray Odinga and they're seeing that this guy is a risk. He's going to give us bad press, why so? Because the African Union is paying him and this is based on the research I did roughly $220,000 per year. If you do the math, that's around 1.7 million Kenya shillings every month. Every day the AU leaders turn on their TV screens, they're seeing their esteemed AU employee talking about rallies, maandamano and things like that, rushing the state house to remove the sitting head of state and they don't want any of that heat on them. If things go south, they don't want to be the ones who are allegedly funding those activities because 1.7 million is enough to fund a few rallies in the course of a month. So they don't want to be part of Ray Lodinga's plans, especially if it is going to cause problems on the continent and it is they who are going to be held liable because they are the ones who are funding him when they can clearly see what he's up to. So the AU does not want to be part and parcel of anything to do with destabilizing the economy of a country, with maandamano or with insurrections especially insurrections. It is no wonder that this termination is coming at a time when Ray Lodinga has ramped up talks of insurrections and giving 14 days deadlines to the president before they can now begin that uh, nationwide onslaught. Now the other reason is that Uhuru Kenyatta had a lot of influence on the African continent. Not so much in Kenya, but across the continent you cannot deny the popularity that Uhuru Kenyatta has enjoyed. It actually confirms what's usually said, that a prophet can't be accepted in his own home. So it's quite clear that the AU gave Ray Lodinga that job. Uhuru Kenyatta single-handedly uh, negotiated that job for Ray Lodinga. It happened during the handshake regime. It happened while Uhuru Kenyatta was incumbent. And the moment he has left, and the government that has come in is at loggerheads with him and Ray Lodinga, and the AU have picked up on that, they've seen that it's inconsequential for us to actually terminate Ray Lodinga's services. Because Uhuru has left, Ruto does not care much about what happens to Raylo Odinga in his positions. In fact, Ruto is very much against Raylo Odinga getting positions for himself and his family members and he has said it time and time again. So the AU took advantage of that loophole, terminated Raylo Odinga's services and they're obviously looking at bringing in somebody else. And lastly, age. Raylo Odinga at his age, he actually shocked all of us when he moved all over this country requesting for votes. Yes, he dozed off in one, two or three rallies but at his age, just being able to move around there. I know people my age and they can't even visit two counties in one day. They'll start complaining. But Ray Lodinga moved around this entire country. But despite having that strength and energy, it is going to be very difficult for Ray Lodinga to continue with these uh, rallies that he is hosting and still going to the AU, still going to various uh, sites in Africa to check the development, to give recommendations, to file reports. Even he himself has uh, admitted as much in his letter where he's telling the AU that they actually need to relieve him so that he can attend to other matters. Much as the timing is off, let's ignore the timing for now, but you can already see that he himself is saying he has other urgent matters to deal with and he doesn't need this extra baggage. So age is a factor. He can now no longer focus on many things as when he was younger. Uh, he's now focusing on the opposition as the opposition leader and that's the only thing he wants to deal with and that's the only thing that he can deal with as at now. Well, that's it from me for now. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. 
We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.